Hey guys, Chase Dynamite here, and today, oh, forgot my hat. <laughs> Let's talk about Hugo Cap, the invention of Hugo Cap, Cap right? One, peop, one, a book that, peop, a graphic novel that people say is one of the best book, one of the best graphic novels of all time. It's about a boy named, a boy thief named, er, orphan thief named Hugo. Who lives in the Paris clock station of Lon in London, I mean Paris, and he's been stealing lots of mechanics because he's been trying to fix something his father made before his father died. It's something called an automaton, and it's supposed to be like a robot man that can write. But over, but over time, a mate, he runs into a toy man, and things start changing for his life. I re the reason I'm talking about this movie is because. First, the reason I'm talking about this film, it, the book and the movie, is because, first of all, look, this film, I, this book actually won the Caldecott Medal, and it's a graphic novel, and so, I, mean, I, don't, I haven't heard of, and I, think, and I think this is the first actual graphic novel that actually won the Caldecott Medal. I, I could be wrong, I mean, I, so far, the, most of the Caldecott Medal winners are just like picture books, like thin picture books. Like... Like My Friend Rabbit, The Three Pigs, and The Man Who Walked Between the Towers, like those. But they have good pictures, though. And the reason I'm talking about this is I saw the film ca that came out three three years ago called Hugo. It was directed by Martin Scorsese and actually people consider it as the best film of 2011. It actually won four Oscars. It won the most Oscars of that of the 83rd Academy Awards, along with the artist. Some people... Another reason I decided to do this is because I just recently read the book because I was so curious about the movie because I kept hearing about the book over and over again. And one of my friends at school, since I've been, since actually I borrowed this from school, they were re reading it one day and I looked at, uh, through the book and I saw pictures in it and I was like, oh, I thought it was like a short book. And so I got the idea to read it this week. And I really like it. And I know you're probably asking, what is the movie, my favorite film of 2011? Well, not really, but it's up there. It's one of them. That, I don't know, however, is taken by Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 2. But yes, the H Hugo is actually one of my favorite films of 2011. And the book is actually one of my favorite, f favorite books of all time. However, it too was beat because it was topped by Tales of Beale the Bard. It's on my bookshelf right there. The film, the film, it, the reason the film, I like the film is because, first of all, the visual effects are pretty cool. Like the way they portrayed the clock towers, London, and the Automaton. And not only that, but they actually, this is something that both the book and movie got right. They both got footage from actual movies that exist, like Man in the Moon and many others. Like, I'll show you. See? That's an actual movie. And they put that scene in the film, too. I think that's why one of the reasons why it won Best Visual Effects. However, there were some other candidates uh, in that year that I was old. However, that uh, that winner is actually in my dislike videos. And it's not because I'm not proud of you. I am, but it's just that category. It's probably some of the best, best visual, greatest best visual effects nominees ever. And there were a lot of good, good movies with visual effects that year. And I was hoping Deathly Hallows Part Two would win. I'm still happy for you, Hugo, but it's just your competition was also high. Another thing that I like about this is the acting. I'll start, what's his name? He does a really good job of Hugo, and he looks like uh, the way he looks in the book. And Ben Kingsley does too, portraying an old man. I mean, I don't know how old he was when he filmed Gandhi, but he really looked like an old man. But I don't know how old he was, Sir Ben Kingsley. And even Richard Dreyfus was in, even Richard, um, Uncle Vernon was in this movie, and many others. Even Jude Law, he was Hugo's father. 
I actually felt for Hugo in book, both the book and the movie. Because his life is under a lot of stress and confusion. I don't, we don't even know how how his father died. Brian Selznick, Brian Selznick, you really did a good job of illustrating this book. And Mark Scorsese, you did a good job of filming this movie. And the characters, the reason the acting is also so good is because they like, they like fit the pictures in the books. I think that's what Scorsese was going for. However, one, however, the film didn't do the best at the box office. I looked on Wikipedia and it said that it didn't do so well. It wasn't a box office bomb and it, it wasn't a box, exactly a box office bomb, but just didn't make as much money. Well, okay, it did make a lot of money, but didn't make it to its high budget. I think that's because, even though some people knew what the movie was going to be about, I think um, it's because the title changed from he Adventure of Hugo Cavalry to just Hugo. Maybe the film made a mo made a, would have made more money. It's kind of like um, the Tangled Effect. I really am impressed with this book. Like, I'm not sure if all graphic novels actually have pictures in them. If you know about any others, please let me know. I might read them. In fact, I was looking uh, on my bookshelf at my school, and there was another book made by Brian Selznick. It was a graphic novel, and I think it has similar pictures like this. I forgot what it was called, but I might read it soon. I can see, so I can see why this film, this uh, book actually won, won the Caldecott Medal because of the pictures, and I think that's a record because I don't know if there's any other chapter books that actually have won this. And the Caldecott Medals people, they never fail. They always pick the right books on which pictures. Um, they always pick the right books to win this award. I really enjoyed reading this book, and I was really excited too. Because I really like reading classic books, especially like this one. I saw the movie before the film, and I didn't know it was based on a book yet, until I started getting into academic team, and they test me on it. I, and I start, that's when I started wondering what the book was like. Overall, Hugo, the, both the book and the movie, are visually wonders for both, both book and movies. The pictures and visual effects are good in both things. The acting or, and the characters are really relatable, and they just fit the description. Also... The musician in this movie, uh, the old man on the toy booth, I'm surprised. I'm surprised when he um when he um after world the war struck and he decided to burn his movies. I was actually surprised that he actually they were actually be they were actually able to make shoes, the bombs of shoes. In fact, I actually believe that, and I thought maybe if I took some a uh, videotape, the black uh, tape and videotapes. The movie videotapes, maybe I could make some of that stuff. They didn't turn out so well. Don't try that at home. I was just curious. Because there are so many possibilities in movies, like, sometimes they make you think you can actually do it in real life, like Star Trek and Star Wars. So, I give Hugo a 10 out of 10. I'd recommend you see it. It's, it is one of the best films of 2011. Well, that's all for now. Be sure to join me for my next review. This is Chase and I'm signing out. And I hope you enjoyed my review.